it's and come on our show and show us what you do and how do you become an expert you you can be an expert you you over there with the harley davidson tattoo yes you ma'am you can be an expert too the other way that you could become an expert is by learning how to do something if you don't already know for instance our libraries are filled with books videos instructional things on how to become an expert now say you wanted to make a blockbuster movie about dinosaurs and you wanted to call this movie jurassic park and you wanted to make millions of dollars on not only the movie but also the home video the billion dollars worth of merchandising how do you go about making a movie like this well i'm glad you asked let me tell you come right over here you go to your library and you take out a book, The Making of Jurassic Park. Now see that? This book gives you all the information you need on how to make the movie. Pictures, diagrams, storyboards. Look at that. All the stuff you need to make Jurassic Park. And if that wasn't enough, and by golly, don't you think it ought to be? You start with the book, go to the video section. They also have a video the making of Jurassic Park. So you can use the book, use the video, learn how to make your own Jurassic Park. And then, of course, after you make the movie and you make all the millions of dollars, you start spinning off and selling things like this beautiful official Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus toy dinosaur. Plastic, resilient. Can I show this? Are we down here? unbreakable kids could play with this for minutes and it won't break so you got your Dilophosaurus um, you got your Jurassic Park color forms see that perfect uh, sticky dinosaurs that stick minutes of fun on this one again this is all big bucks after you make your movie you start selling this stuff in stores people buy it and then you make more money. And of course, the official Jurassic Park Visitor Center comb, which is uh, incidentally part of the Jurassic Park Visitor Center uh, overnight kit, which has uh, a shaving cream, Jurassic Park soap, Jurassic Park tissues, Jurassic Park, everything you need to spend a night in Jurassic Park. Now, not only can you get the merchandising, make the movie, make the home videos, but you can also make books that say how to make Jurassic Park, books and videos, so you make more money. And it keeps going. Then someone else can buy the book and video, make their own Jurassic Park, and it just goes on and on and on. Um, there is one slight hitch. Jurassic Park was already made. The idea was there first, and somebody else got to it. So uh, you might not want to use this as your next project. It, it costs billions of dollars to do, by the way. But uh, it's lots of fun, and you can do this in your spare time. Now, if you want to make the real Jurassic Park, there are books in the library on um, easy steps to genetic engineering, how to buy a tropical island, and vertebrate paleontology. So all that stuff is in the library. You want to do it, you can do it. All right? We got lots of show coming up. That's the Jurassic Park part of our show. Lots of stuff coming up. I want to answer some questions that were left over from during the week from the pet show. Before we go to our dancing, dancing, dancing. Uh, don't forget the pet show is on Extra Help Tuesday nights at 7.30 with Mark Marone right here on the Extra Help channel on Cablevision. And our first question of the night. How do I deal with an aggressive dog and a baby? Well, definitely you want to keep the dog away from an aggressive baby because you never know what'll happen. A little kid with drooling and mouthful of dog hair. You don't like that. Oh, it says, uh, use proper supervision and make sure that the dog doesn't feel threatened by the baby. You know how babies love to do things like grab the dog's lip and yank it down and grab the dog's tail or anything else that might be hanging around. Uh, try to get the dog used to the baby as a member of the family. It's only right that the baby should be thought of as a member of the family. Okay. How do I get a cockatiel to lay more eggs? Now, that's a question. Uh, increase the bird's diet in calories and protein. 
and hold up little pictures of eggs to give the cockatiel the idea, just in case the cockatiel wasn't thinking in that general direction. Uh, make the cockatiel part of your Easter activities, coloring eggs, and the cockatiel will sort of catch on. Okay, how do I keep my cat from killing songbirds? <laughs> Does your cat really kill songbirds? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, the, the birds sing like Barry Manilow songs or things like that. Is that why the cat is killing them? In that case, there's no way to keep your cat from killing songbirds, and unless, of course, you keep the cat in the house, which is the answer to this question. Just keep the cat in the house and keep the songbirds out, and we'll have uh, no more of that murdering stuff going on. Okay, what should one do to help a hermit crab change its shell? Hermit crabs, you know, live in shells. They kind of move in. And as they grow, they decide, well, this place is a little small. We like the studio in the beginning, but I think it's time to move up to a one-bedroom with a deck, if possible. So what you do is you buy a larger shell, and a good pet store will carry shells for hermit crabs. Place the new shell in its tank and leave the crab alone. Just don't bother him. The crab knows how to do this. Crab is a trained professional. The crab is an expert. Uh, when the, her the hermit crab is ready, it will go to the new shell. The key is to introduce the crab to its new home, and when they're ready, the crab or crabs will have a place to go. So that's how you do it with a hermit crab. You can also find shells at the beach, uh, preferably Florida shells, because that's where hermit crabs are from. All right. How does my dog get gas? <laughs> Well, your dog sneaks into your wallet at night, takes out your Exxon credit card, gets in the car, drives down Jericho Turnpike. That really doesn't do that. If you, if you thought that was happening, I suggest professional help. Okay, the dog might have intestinal parasites or the dog food that it's eating is wrong. Try changing the dog's diet first, and if this doesn't work, then take the dog to the vet and have his stool checked for possible parasites. And those are our questions from the Pet Show with Mark Marone, Tuesday nights at 7.30. We're going to cut to a break, and we're going to be back here with Mike Levine doing the Tarandella on You're the Expert. What would the world look like if cable had never been born? Well, no cable, no MTV. No MTV, no choose or lose. No choose or lose, no 100,000 new young voters. No cable, no TNT. No TNT, hardly any chance to see this. I'm in the rain. Which would be chilling, but no way to know how chilling because no cable, no weather channel, no way to know what to pack for your next vacation. After all, you might need an umbrella. OK Cable, it's everything television can be. Hi, I'm Joseph Ryan, and I work for Cablevision's Converter Control. Part of my job is to make sure all the converters that leave here are in good working condition for our customers. Sometimes a converter will need a repair. When that happens, we give the customers a new converter right away so they don't have to wait for one to be repaired. I like knowing that the work I do helps customers enjoy a clear picture when they sit down to watch TV. And by doing my job well, I help give customers the good service they deserve from Cablevision. Welcome back. It's 1-800-EXT-HELP. I'm Bill Polchinski. You're on You're the Expert, and we're sitting here talking with Mike Levine. Welcome to the show. Hi. It's great to have you here. You've got quite a weekend coming up. Thank you. You're a uh, folk dancing instructor, and you have been in the Great Neck area for 28 years. Right. Wow. How did you get started? Well, I started folk dancing uh, before World War II, and uh, did it before, and uh, then did it during the war. I did therapeutic folk dancing and uh, things like uh, wheel, uh, wheelchair square dancing and uh, all different types of dances that are uh, indicated whatever the, in the, in the uh, injury was of the patient. So I did that all through uh, World War II. And uh, when I got out of the service, I formed a group and we spent a lot of time going through different hospitals, uh, shut-ins, homes, and so forth. And uh, we look to bring entertainment and warmth wherever people couldn't get out. And uh, we did that for quite a number of years. And in 1967, I was asked to start folk dancing at uh, the Great Neck Adult Center. 
and it's sponsored by the Board of Education of Great Neck, and I'm a member of their faculty. And uh, in addition to the uh, dancing for adult education, I also do folk dancing for seniors. And uh, altogether, it's about four and a half to five hours a week. That's a and this is in addition to doing work. I'm, I work full time as well. You work full time, and you do all this. And you, when you um, were touring hospitals, you said you were doing some uh, recreational and rehabilitational dancing, mm -hmm. and wheelchair dancing. You mentioned, mm -hmm. and that was all in addition to working at the same time. That's right. Busy, busy guy. And you're going to give us a little demonstration tonight, I understand. And uh, what what are we going to be seeing? Well, I brought uh, three of the people who are in my group, and uh, we're going to do an Italian dance called the Italian Tarantella, Sicilian Tarantella. And uh, I'll show them, I'll show you some of the basic steps, and then we'll run it through and, and do the dance. Now, Tarantella is an Italian dance, as you said, uh, and this is the Sicilian version, and your name is Levine. Was mm -hmm. it shortened from Levino or Levinelli or? <laughs> Nothing to do with it, with Italian, but uh, actually the name is Leuven. And my father came to this country in 1912. They asked him, uh, what is your name? And with an accent, he said Leuven. So they wrote down Levine, and uh, since that's the name they gave him, that's the name he kept, and that's the way it's been all these years. So now you're Mike Levine. Well, you've always been Mike Levine. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're going to be showing us the Tarantella. What other um, folk dances, what other countries do you feature when you teach? We cover, in folk dancing, we do uh, the dances of many lands. We do Irish, German, Swedish, Norwegian, Greek, uh, Serbian, Israeli. And then we, I'd also do American squares, circle dances, line dances. So we cover the entire thing, but most of the dances are, are circle dances because uh, in the Great Neck area, there are many single people, be they widows or divorced or uh, widowers and so forth. And uh, many of the single women don't like doing couple dances with other women. So we try to do as many uh, folk dancing uh, groups in circles and uh, it works out very well that way. So this would be more than one couple, two couples or several couples? Yeah, well in this particular dance, two couples are involved, and this is what we're going to do. Oh, that's terrific. Maybe we should uh, bring out the other couples and uh, take a look at how we do the Sicilian Tarantella. Good how idea. about that? We'll bring them out and uh, we can get up here and see who's who. Right, Rena Gorin. Welcome. Stan and Elsie Wallens. Hello. Oh, <laughs> Elsie and Stan. Well, come on out here and, and let's see how uh, Mike Levine conducts his uh, folk dancing class. And this is the Sicilian Tarantella. Can I stand here and watch or will I be in the sure way? Sure, man. You won't be in the way. Sicilian Tarantella, uh, well, actually the Tarantella started many, many years ago with an old wives' tale that uh, a woman was bitten by a tarantula uh, spider. And the only way that she could get rid of the venom of the spider is by dancing. And they bring in musicians, and the musicians would play, and she'd dance, and even if it was all night, she'd continue to dance until she collapsed. And when she came to, she was all cured. The venom would all be all gone. And the dance that she did, they called the Tarantella. Wouldn't it be a little better just to run down to the drugstore and get a little bug bite medicine and put that on? That's more fun doing the dance. I guess it is. <laughs> so what I'll do is we'll just go through the steps real quickly, and then we'll go through the Sicilian Tarantella. Sicilian Tarantella. It's prom season, don't forget. Starts hopping on the left foot and then the right foot. It's hop, hop, one, two, three, four. And as you do that, you clap your hands. Let's do it together. And hop, hop. One, two, three, four. Hop, hop. One, two, three, four. Done twice. Second step, we move forward, almost touching right shoulders. And as you do, you raise your hand. Let's try that. And forward, two, three, four. Back. Now left shoulders, forward, and back. That's done twice. And then we face opposite partner. In other words, you'll be dancing with her, and I'll be dancing with your partner. And we go forward first. This couple, 
and go, do a right elbow turn. And we do that, and then come back. You do that, and we come back, and left elbow turn, and we come back, left elbow turn. We do a do si do, almost touching right shoulders, but don't touch, and back up. Same with the other couple. And then we walk counterclockwise and in one circle and walk around the other way and back and we do a left hand star now when we do a left hand star you put your hand on the wrist in front of you and that's the left hand star left hand star looks like back an the other way with the fun. right hand star it's an oppenheim oppenheim that's what it is <laughs> it was right one hand of those star guys. and back to position and we start from the b Beginning. Now we can do it with a little bit of music. You'll see what it looks like. I'll call it as we go. You won't get lost. The Sicilian Tarantella. Are you ready for the music? I especially like that walking uh, thing. That that is more my speed, kind of thing. And it also reminds me of being in prison when we only had a small space to walk around in. and We were all together, but I don't <laughs> want to get into that now. So the do si do is that? Did uh, square dancing get it from the tarantella? Did tarantella get it from square dancing? Well, the, the, every uh, nationality calls it something else. We know it as a, we know it as a do si do, and. Uh, because we do it in square dancing. Uh, I don't know what the Italians call it, but they do it the same thing. Well, dosi do sounds Italian. We'll go. We'll, we'll go with that. Yeah, that works out. And and uh, how long do you have to dance before the the venom is out of your body? Until you collapse. <laughs> Until you collapse. Well, why is it that that they have uh, well they have uh, the tarantella for Italian, and then there's la cucaracha, which is about cockroaches. It seems like we have a lot of dancing that has to do with bugs. And I also noticed that when you were making some of the steps, if you have tarantulas in your house, you can step on them and <laughs> get rid of them. Right. I want to thank you so much, all of you, for being here. Thanks for being on You're the Expert. Mike, you've got a big honor coming up this weekend. Could you just tell us about it briefly into that uh, uh, camera over there? The Great Neck United Community Fund is having its annual banquet this Sunday night at the uh, Officers Club of the Merchant Marine in Kings Point. Long Island, and uh, I'm one of the honorees. They really choose people who have been active in the community. 
and uh, this year I was chosen and I feel very honored because of it. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And thank you again for being with us. We're going to look at Debbie Ostretcher doing some country line dancing and we're going to be back with Debbie in the studio right after this video. Welcome back. It's 1-800-EXT-HELP. That's ext help If you want to call in and ask any of our experts anything about their expertise, we have with us Debbie Ostretcher. She's been dancing on tape. Welcome to the program. Thank you. You're a country line dancer from uh, way down south in the South Bronx, are you? Right. Where are you from originally? I, was, I lived for a year in the Bronx. I moved to Queens, lived there all my life. A lot of country up there, I bet. Oh, yeah. In Queens, uh, that, that's where country music got started, isn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely. They moved it down to Nashville when after, it got a little more Yeah, pop after popular. we got it popularized. So, you're from Bronx, Manhattan, and Queens. How did you get started in country line dancing, a city girl like you? My roommate loved country music. I hated it. She convinced me to go out with her, and that was it. I got bit by the bug. Started teaching. Now, see, did you have to dance around all no. night to get rid of the bug? No, didn't have to do that, though. But started teaching because an instructor didn't show up, and it's been teaching ever since. And where do you teach? I started teaching at um, New York Metropolitan Country Music Association, and now I teach for Freeport Adult Ed. On Thursday nights, usually part of the adult ed program. That's terrific. And do people have to be from Freeport, or could no, they be from anywhere? No, they're or? from anywhere. They can just sign up. They can call the school for information. That's terrific. Now, <laughs> you, you uh, said that your first experience at country line dancing, uh, you went to a bar, and uh, it wasn't, well, it was a memorable experience. Would you mind telling us a little about it? Well, um, a woman threatened my life in the bathroom and then tried to run me over with her car when I left because she thought I was trying to make time with a man. Um, it was just appropriate, <laughs> like out of an old Western movie. There's, there's got to be a country Western song in that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I just haven't written it yet. Can, can anyone who uh, goes out country line dancing expect to be almost run over by the end no, of the No, that's, that's the exception to the rule. Usually country folk are pretty friendly. Now, again, we're in New York City, the home of disco dancing. And um, where does one go to country line dance one, once you teach them? Where can they go? Surprisingly, there were really a lot of places. Denim and Diamonds in Manhattan. There's a couple other clubs in Manhattan. Um, Nassau Country Inn, Mulcahy's on Long Island. Just, you know, ask around. Go. So you have a lot of choices. How about for our friends out in Suffolk County? Do you know of any of the places um, out there? Sure. Narragansett Inn has country dances. Um, Ballyhoo's out in Smithtown, I believe. Mm -hmm. But not sure. So you can dance all over the place. You can dance. Every night of the week, basically, except Monday. Why Mondays? I don't know. We're dark on Monday nights, no dancing. So what was everybody doing in the video before? In the video, they were doing Honky Tonk Twist. Honky Tonk Twist. Now, there were different styles, different names for the dances, like we had the Frug and we had the Hully Gully and There the were twist. different dances. There's Tush Push and things like that have, that have lasted tush forever. Push? And then there are dances. Yes, you tush, push your tush. 
And there are dances that are choreographed for specific songs, like Honky Tonk Twist. Is there an achy breaky yes, dance? Yes, there is. This is just mind boggling to me. See, I'm the natural enemy to dance, and I looked at the video and I said, no way, not me. I, I don't think that, uh, no, I have two it's blocks easy. of ice. It's, it's really easy. I can learn? You can absolutely learn. Well, you're a good teacher. Would you? Absolutely. I'm, I'm putting my life on the line here because, uh, as I said, And I'm putting enemy. my reputation on the line. You are. That's, yeah, you mean if I don't, you know, do a good job, then people are going to say, what kind of teacher is she? Absolutely. Well, let's give this a whirl. Come on up here. Now, we're, first you're going to show me okay. what we have we're to do. We're going to do a dance called Southern Swinging. Southern Swinging. Mm -hmm. And all you're going to do, it's real simple. It's got all of 32 steps. 32? Wait a minute. 32, 32? steps. Hey, I could have done one with 128. You could have done one with 128. <laughs> okay, you're going to take your right foot and just touch forward. One. Touch together two. Touch back three. And touch together four. Step together four. Oops. Same thing with the left foot. Forward one. Side two. Whatever. Three. Four. Okay? So the first eight, real easy. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, Oops. four. Oops. I, I'm feeling a little, I, I feel like there's something missing. You, excuse me, let me just step over here for a minute. Aha, uh -huh, that's going to make a difference, absolutely. I notice, I notice you're not wearing one. Does that no. make a difference? No, I get hat heads. <laughs> I, Sweat too much. I don't know what's going to happen with me, but for the next hour and a half, well, we'll see okay. if I have hat heads. Now let's, let's try, try that this. again. Okay. Ready, so, and one, one, two, two three, three, four, four five, two. six. Much better. Hey. Whoa! <laughs> the hat. The hat makes the man, though. Okay. It's magic. It's like my dumbo take, feather. We're going to take the left foot and just go to the side. You're going to step and slide and step and slide again. Same thing to the right. Step, slide, step, slide. All right. I like okay. that. From the, you want to go from the beginning? Sure. Or let's start from the beginning. Okay. Ready? Okay. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, left. One, two, three, four, five. I'm impressed. Well, I'm you're a very impressed. good teacher. If I can dance, you can dance. Anybody if I can, dance, can do this. You can dance. Ready? Next part, okay. you're going to step forward diagonally and slide the foot up and step and slide again. And you're going to do the same thing going to the right. You're going to step and slide and step and slide. Okay. Okay. And the last part, we'll just add it now. You're going to go to the left. You're going to step one, cross behind two. Now you're going to turn for three and step together for four. Okay. And the last eight counts, you're just going to swivel your heels. One, Whoops. two. Three, four. Hey, that's okay. like doing the twist all over again. Yeah, it's just like doing the twist. Okay. So we're going to go from the top. All right. Ready? Okay. Five, six, six seven, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Left. To the left. One, two, three, four. And right. Forward. One, two, three, four. One, two. Line. One, two, three. Heels. One, two, three. Start again. One, One two, two. Oh, three, I see. Four. Five, six, seven, eight. One, one two, two, three, four, five, this six, seven, eight. This is the dance seven, that eight, never one, two, three, ends. Four, five, just till the music stops. Okay? Uh, yep. But that's what it is. That's easy. It's called Southern Swinging. I love it. Can we do it to music? Sure, can we, we can. It to music? And if you have a call about this, we want to uh, hear from you. 1 800 EXT HELP. Let us know. Let's do it with music. Five, six, seven, eight, I feel it. Don't run into the bench there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Start again. Three, two, three, four, five, six. Wide load. Coming through. Forward. One, two, three, four, five, six. Second turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Start again. One, two, three. Now to the left. Now to the left. Forward. I keep forgetting to go back to the beginning. That's okay. 
We all make mistakes. But you're a very good teacher. If I can do this, anyone can do this. We have a lot of fun with it. One, two, three, four. Left. Right. Step slide. Step slide. I couldn't do this without the hat, by the way. It's the hat that makes it. It's part of the costume, like my boots. Yeah. Forward. Left and turn. And swivel. Start again. One, two, three, four. To the left. Forward. I got it. All right. You got it. Well, thank you, Debbie. That was great. No problem. Wow. What? Now, um, here, have a seat. Oh, what a workout. Shoo wee I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm plum tuckered out. Plum tuckered out. Um, Try doing that for hours and hours and hours on end. Yeah. Now, do you have any bug dances like we had the uh, Tarantella and the Cucaracha? There's a dance called the Bug. How did I know? And does it involve? Uh, could you show us a couple of steps of of how the Bug works? Sure. Can I remember? Yeah. Okay. The You're Bug. The expert. Okay. Um. Yeah. One, two. Three, four, five, six. Heel, toe. Oh, I just blew it. Another good bug killing dance. Another good bug killing dance. Especially if you're wearing That's you pointy need... boots, yes. you get them in the corners, don't Absolutely. you? I knew you were going to say that. Get in the corners and kill all those bugs. How did I know you were going to say that? Unbelievable. Um, what other funny names, funny dances? Boot scoot and boogie. There's a lot of tush push, of course, tush push, where you I like that one. wind up pushing your tush. Your own tush? Your Are own you tush. you to push anyone else's tush? That's well, I would make sure I knew the person first. Yes, and make sure the person is unattached. And if they are attached, that they're, the person they're attached to isn't ten times bigger than you are. Or is not there. Or is not driving after this. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what do you uh, do? Uh, do something during the day when yeah. you're not dancing around? I'm a school teacher, and believe it or not, I teach this to my students. Do you? What do you teach? I, I'm a special education teacher. Oh, good for elementary. you. Elementary. And where is that? East New York, Brooklyn. Are your uh, kids watching? I don't think so, because we don't get cable vision in Queens and Brooklyn. So send uh, to 1-800-EXT-HELP. Let's, <laughs> let's see if we can get cable for those poor people in Brooklyn. <laughs> your contributions will help. Um, I have a couple of questions, uh, and I think we might have some callers coming in, but I wanted to ask a, a uh, question or two that we had left over from our previous shows, if you don't mind. Absolutely. No because problem. Because I have to do these, otherwise the people who called in feeling really left out. So we don't want Not them to fun. do that. Okay, this is a question from the computer show with Mark Glass on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. And the question is, how is a mouse driver loaded? Well, let me tell you a thing or two, buddy. If you're driving mice around, you have no business being loaded. Mice are people, too. And don't get loaded if you're going to drive your mice. The, the question is, how is a mouse driver loaded? For Windows, type Setup at the DOS prompt in the Windows subdirectory, then follow the screens. Through Windows, run double-click the Windows Setup icon, then follow the screens. That's from the computer show with uh, Mark Les. One other question, how much hard drive space do I need? And the answer is right now the 820-87, uh, 820, uh, 820 to uh, 870 megabyte drives are the most reasonable. But this leads to a problem for most computers older than 18 months. The 528 megabyte max that the computer can see uh, if you buy a drive, make sure it comes with a software driver that lets your computer see more than the 528 megabytes. Okay, I think we have a phone call. And the first phone call is from Travis. I think, it, is it Travis Tritt? Travis, no, are you out there? Travis. Hi, Travis. What's up? Welcome to the show. Hi, uh, I have a question. Uh, I, I'm going to see your prom this year. Yes. And it has a country theme. And I want to know if you could like, show me like one of the top moves, like dances. Can you show Travis one of the top moves 
that he can uh, dazzle his friends at the senior prom. Well, you just saw us doing Southern Swing, and that's got almost all of them, the vines and the, and the toe touches. Did you see those when they were happening? No, I just tuned in. Okay. Oh. You want to see it again, huh? Okay, we'll do a quick demo here. Travis, this, this one's for you. Okay, you ready? Okay. Ready, go. Oh, we're going to get some... Gonna get... Oh, that's fine. Five, six, seven, eight. See, I made a mistake this time. Playing games with my heart. I can't do it. And if you really want to dazzle them, you swivel the hips like that. Travis, are you getting this? Yeah. Watch Debbie, don't watch me. <laughs> I got it that time. That was the first time I got the pickup on the right foot. Now we need to get some hip action in those swivels. I got it again. You got it. Twice in a row. This is unbelievable. This is showbiz history. Twice in a row. Okay, Travis, how was that? That's good. All right. Can you, go, can you guys do the chicken dance? You, you just keep going until either no. the band quits and packs up and goes home, or, uh, you, you know, somebody collapses. Thanks, Travis. Do we have anyone else? No, we don't. Debbie, thank you so much for being no on problem. the show. And thank you for teaching me this. I'm going to go out and do some country line dancing, because after all, I've got the lid. Then I'll see you later. We're going to be back with Mary Lou Shade and some Irish step dancing right after this. Thank you. Hello. Welcome back. It's 1-800-EXT-HELP. You're on You're the Expert. And I'm sitting here with Mary Lou Shade. Welcome to the program. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you're you. uh, an old pro at uh, doing television. I mean a young pro is what I mean. You've been on the Ed Sullivan Show. Yes. The Merv Griffin Show. And my 
younger days I was, yes. And you're currently younger days yes. because you've still got young days here and, and you teach Irish step dancing. Yes, I've been teaching for about 27 years now. And how did you start? Uh, I used to help my former dance teacher, who was his name was Cyril McNiff. I used to help him with all his beginners and I found that I really enjoyed teaching the children and watching them grow. 801 and let us know just what it is that I should do here because I'm a little befuddled on how to sit on these park benches. So uh, the controversy goes on. We'll, we'll find out what happens throughout the night and throughout the weeks. Okay, right now, though, I have a question left over from Extra Help during the week, and this is from the Auto Repair Show with Steve Brancatello, which is seen Thursday, 7.30 p.m., every Thursday night. And the question is, should a person use high-octane fuel even though their car requirement calls for low-octane fuel? Well, a person should never use high-octane fuel because you can get sick. Always put it in your car first. Um, and the uh, answer is, from the Bronx, there is no advantage to changing octane. Use what is recommended by the manufacturer as outlined in the owner's manual. And it also probably says it right when you open up your uh, little gas thing there. So look into that. Use the fuel that your manufacturer says to use, and your car will be a happy little car. We're going to take a little break, and then we're going to be back with Dante Mancini and Prestidigitation. You're the expert. I'm your host, Bill Polchinski. And in the studio here, he just magically appeared, Dante Mancini. Hello, Dante. Welcome Hi, to the you, show. Man. Thank you. That's a great name. Thank that you. That is a great name. You know, keep it. I, I know your real name is probably something like Fred. Bob, Fred. Yeah, Fred. Yeah. Fred Smith. And uh, Fred, it's really good to have you on the Thank show. You. Thank you. Uh, you do magic. And how long yes. have you been doing magic? Uh, well, I've been doing magic now for about eight, nine years, uh, professionally for about five. Wow. Yeah. Eight or nine. How'd you get started? Uh, I went to a camp out in New Hampshire. It was a it was a beautiful camp. I had this Dinky Wool Magic program, so I signed it up. I didn't want to do like rowboating or something. The famous and, uh, Dinky Magic the program. Dinky magic the Dinky program. School of Magic. I've heard and, of that. It's uh, famous in Europe. <laughs> and so I went there. I took it, and it was okay, okay. And uh, I came back, and my father, who's a uh, amateur magician, he just enjoys playing around with it. He um, told me about a camp that was designed just for magic. So I said, well, I'll do it. Like six years later, and can't get a deck of cards out of my hand. Really? Yeah, I came back. I was shoving cards underneath the bathroom door. Pick card, pick card. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you must be a lot of fun around oh, that. Oh yes, <laughs> you can bet. Okay, what's the first trick that hooked you on magic? First trick that hooked me on magic. That'd be hard to say. It really would be. Um, they teach you just about everything, and you just sort of make your own stuff up. It's the fun oh. of it. Oh well, do you have some tricks to show us? Ah uh, yes, yeah, matter of fact, I do. Do you call them tricks? I mean, tricks seems like cheap, you know. Yeah, it's derogatory. Yeah. Some magicians have a big problem calling them tricks, others call them illusions. Illusions. Some, illusions is much yeah, better. Yeah, some big-headed people call them miracles, and uh, I call them tricks. Miracles. <laughs> miracles, miracles is, uh, yeah. is going a little over the edge. Well, so, uh, uh, what illusions do you have for us? Well, I happen to boil along some stuff that I would normally do for restaurants, restaurant magic. Um, <laughs> like sense. making your food disappear? <laughs> well, right. Making the check smaller? That'd be nice. That would be a good one. Okay, uh, start out with I have a deck of cards, and it's an ordinary deck. And uh, I know people often ask, ask me you know, how you know it's an ordinary deck. 
You know, people often ask me how you know it's an ordinary day. How do you know it's an I'm ordinary day? I'm so glad deck? you asked. Well, I'm glad I asked, too. Well, he says so right in the back. So. Ordinary deck. Can we so, see that? There you go. Where are we? I can't believe it. Wow. Ordinary deck. This deck has been factory inspected and deemed void of all forms of trickery, gimmickry, or skullduggery. There you go. And you don't want skullduggery in your deck, that's for sure. <laughs> well, actually, no. It is a real deck. And all 52 Ooh. cards. Ooh. Ooh, you like that? Do it one more time. Oh, I like okay. that. 12 minutes to go. I can do this all day. Okay, well, what we're going to want to do is take out four cards. Okay. So, uh, well, first we'll give it a little shuffle. And give it a little moonwalk. There you go. We're going to cut out four cards. One. Two. Oh, I saw how you did that. Did you? Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Three. And deck one time. And finally, a four. Whoa! Okay, now we could cut to any any four cards in the whole deck. However, we hopefully <laughs> cut two. Whoa! Check it out. Can we see these four aces here? Singing group from the 1950s, the four aces. Look at that. How did you do that? Or Very are you going to well. tell me? Very well. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, He's go. got a hundred of them. Yes. <laughs> uh, do you know your colors? I do know my colors. Okay, let's go here. Uh, red, black, red, black. Pretty impressive. Thank Have you. you seen this before? No, this is my first time. Pretty cool honestly. Really? Oh, yes. Beginner's luck, I think. <laughs> well, your job is to take the red ace and keep your eye on it the whole time. I'll put the box in there okay. on top of it. And over here we have the uh, second red ace. So what we're going to do is going to place those under there. Now, a quick little memory test here. If you have the red aces, I should have? The black aces. Very good. Very well. You're excelling at this. Now, uh... So which You're cards so were you good. watching again? I was watching the red ones over right. here. And have I touched them? Have I played with them? Uh, I don't think so. Well, of course I did. I put them down. So. Well, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were watching me? I, I was watching the red, red ones. Red aces. Actually, you weren't paying close Now, attention. hold it. So How did that happen? The red aces. And over here, we have the black ones. Whoa. Huh? That is an illusion. Thank you. I didn't take my eyes off the f in fact I have eyeball juice all over those cards. That's lovely. <laughs> yes, isn't it? In fact you can keep the cards in that. No, okay. I don't do that. Okay, um so these are the type of tricks we do, uh I said tricks. Uh close up, you know, real Mirror. personal. Yes, up close. And uh in fact I have something interesting here for you. You know what this is? Uh, it looks like a uh invisible purse. Is that that close? happened? Yeah, exactly. It's a and magician's it's, purse. Ooh. See, magicians keep their props. Let me, let, let me just hold this up for the... Oh. Go. Oh. Whoa, oh, and I had to just... Wait a minute. There you go. Where did this come from? Am I allowed to touch this? Yeah, play with it. Play Whoa. There you a go. plum. This is a real plum. Okay. Now, uh, this is Where's me. This is a little from? sponge ball. It's, uh, it could actually do the oldest trick and most famous trick in the world. Oh, yeah? Yes. So yeah. on the lady in half. Here, I'll show you. Watch. We'll put it down, right? We'll just go like that. Oh. <laughs> hey, that was cool. Now I'm gonna need your help. Okay? What I'm gonna ask you to do. Yes. Is I'm gonna need your hand. So put My your hand? Or the clean one. Or the clean one? Yeah, uh, yeah, I left the clean one, one home. Can <laughs> I use this one? Okay. Well, there we go. Okay, what I'm gonna do is gonna put the first ball in my hand and gonna put the second one in your hand. I want you to squeeze tightly. Squeeze it tightly, okay. Right. I'm gonna visibly throw my ball over your ball. Did you feel it? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, well, here. Slowly open your hand over the table. Hey! Did you find you? Now How'd that happen? Pretty impressive, eh? Very impressive. Do you have okay. to pay extra to get the second one, or does that no, just come buy free? one and keep buy it Buy one, get one free. Greatest like deal magic. Here, um, now I'm going to ask you to hold that one and that one. Squeeze that way. Run on this one. And yet again, we're going to do it. Put the ball in my hand and go. Yeah. Throw it invisibly. Hey, hey, hey. Now, 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 now. Did you feel it that time? No, uh, I didn't feel anything. Well, if you're being I feel, I feel queasy that... There are three in my hand now, for some reason. Okay. Wait a minute. You just you gave me two, and you threw that one. I didn't feel it. I don't know where it's getting in there. <laughs> you have pretty strong grip there, too. I do. Um, you count the three, because I know you mastered the colors so well. I did. I got the colors, okay. and I got, the, I got one to three. Okay, great. Is so, ready? Math? Count with me. Yes. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Okay. Two. Ah, very good. Okay, we're going to take one of these. We're going to put in the hand. We're going to take That's these one. two, put them in the pocket. One, two. Okay. I mean, in the hand. One. All right, I, I did a little fast. We'll try this one more time. Okay, I'm going to take one of these. One of these. I'm going to put it in the That's hands. number one. Okay, I'll that's take two of these. Two of those put and them put them away. You got one in your hand. One, just one. 
one. Okay, aye, Phil, aye, aye. there's a pattern for me here, okay? Okay, last time. Okay. I, I'm not going to look away at the cameras anymore. Okay. Uh, let me 15. just stare at this here. <laughs> We're going to take the one. We're going to put it in the hand. We're going to take the two. Two. We're going to put them in the pocket. How many in the hand? One. One. Uh, I'll two. give you a second chance. Uh, uh, two. Uh, uh, I didn't go yet. Uh, uh, three. Uh, two. Uh, one, um. Actually, no. Two dollars. Not at all. Hey. And they're all, all three are in my pocket. Well, how did you do that, though? I mean, well, there you were. You, you're catching on, though, slowly. You uh, really, very slowly. <laughs> you got here. We're going to take the three, right? Yeah. We're rolling a tight ball. I'm going to ask you to put out your hand. Yep. Squeeze it really tight. I got it. Okay? Now, I have one last one here. Okay? Yeah. You got one. We're going to put that back in the hand. We're going to throw it again over Whoa. here. Now, if one made two, yeah. two made three, how much should three make? Uh, three should make four. Okay, open up the hand. What do I got? Right. <laughs> exactly. This is exactly how old my son is, and he'll be very excited about seeing this on the air. Great, great. <laughs> um, you know what? Four, You've been one, a two, wonderful three. helper. Thank you. And uh, I've been a hamburger go, helper. Oh, and since you have a four-year-old son, yes. would you like a balloon animal? I would love a balloon great, animal. Great. In fact, it's more than just a balloon. By the way, what's your son's favorite color? Um, it changes from minute to minute, but uh, <laughs> last time he said it was blue. Perfect. Blue. Okay, we got blue right here. Silly balloon animals. Wacky. Wacky wild stuff. Okay, what we're going to do now is to make you the magic doggy. Oh, the Ooh. magic doggy. Impressive. Will this last a few days? I'm not going to see my son until Sunday. Mm, yeah. It will? Keep away from Sharp Object. Okay. Fine. Get it, son, Sunday, son. Ah, very good. Totally missed that one. Here okay. we go. There you go. Okay. One magic doggy coming up. What do you want to name the doggy? Uh, Ruff Ruff. Ruff Ruff. The magic Ruff Ruff. That's great. There you go. There you go. In fact, he is trained. That reminds me of a fraternity trick, but I won't, you know, <laughs> talk about it. Okay, watch. Uh, watch. Sit up. See? Roll over. Even barks. Ruff Ruff. Ruff okay. Ruff. Here we go. We're going to finish up here. Give this dog some legs. And back legs so he doesn't have to run in a circle. And we have Ruff Ruff, the magic dog. Ruff Ruff, the magic dog. Now. Now, if I hold him in my hand, will you make four more up here? <laughs> that would be impressive. I would like that. Actually, he's going to help us with the next trick. Oh, he is? Yes, he is. Our last trick. Last trick. I can get rid of these. Uh, all the aces are still together here. Yes. So they know there's uh, nothing. We don't, we don't want any, any funny business going yeah. on here. This is Ruff Ruff. Ruff Ruff. Ruff. I do, boy. What is it? Fire at the mill? Timmy's in trouble? We'll get right down there. Okay. Okay? Yes. All right. Welcome back. Thank All you. All right. Uh, why don't you tell me when to stop? Oh, stop. Okay. You got it? Yes. Got it? Yeah. Do okay, I have to tell you? We're going to lose it back in the deck. Okay. It's time for a little... Mission Impossible down. music. Here we go. We'll give the deck one quick shuffle. Yeah, and now Ruff shot. Ruff, magic dog, is going to find your car. <laughs> okay? Um. Find the dog, do? boy. I mean, find the card, boy. We're going to cut the deck into four piles. Ah, cut the deck. And we have Ruff Ruff. Ruff Ruff. Sniff out your card. Okay. Is it there, Ruff Ruff? No? Not there. There? No? There? There, there? No? Is it there, Ruff Ruff? It's there! Okay. Ruff Ruff feels that it's in there. Get rid of these all less. Ooh. Now, Ruff Ruff. Okay. He's ready. He's going to put the deck into his mouth. Yes. Okay. This is great. And in a vicious dog motion, shake he's going to throw all. all the cards onto the table like that. Yeah. Ruff Ruff's head is twisted. Now, Ruff Ruff has narrowed it down to three cards the two of spades the five of diamonds, and the five of hearts. So what we're going to do is going to have Ruff Ruff go over it one last time. Don't do anything tricky. And he says it is the five of diamonds. And that's exactly that what it was, Ruff Ruff. A very smart one balloon animal. Ruff Ruff. Just think. This, this dog was just a balloon moments ago. And now he picked my card. 
Anthony from Deer Park, you're on the phone. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where did he learn how to do all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where'd you learn how to do all that, says Anthony. Um, Asks Anthony. Well, Anthony, uh, it was a matter of a lot of practice, reading up. They even have videos now, which is the best way to learn it. Uh, your local library should have plenty of books to get you started. And from there on in, you can pick it up wherever you want. Well, Dante, it was magic having you here, Thank and, you. Uh, you know, I learned a little magic when I got married. Uh, you know, I, I entered into marriage, and my life savings disappeared. <laughs> Frank, would you like to learn a trick? Uh, no, we have to go. Okay. We have okay. to go, but thanks for being here. Would you Thank come you. back and teach us more tricks? Anytime. Would you though. saw those benches in half for us? Okay. Thanks so much. We're going to no cut away to a little uh, cable vision break, and we're going to be back with more of your The Expert. Hi, I'm Joseph Ryan, and I work for Cablevision's Converter Control. Part of my job is to make sure all the converters that leave here are in good working condition for our customers. Sometimes a converter will need a repair. When that happens, we give the customers a new converter right away so they don't have to wait for one to be repaired. I like knowing that the work I do helps customers enjoy a clear picture when they sit down to watch TV. And by doing my job well, I help give customers the good service they deserve from Cablevision. What would the world look like if cable had never been born? Well, no cable, no MTV. No MTV, no choose or lose. No choose or lose, no 100,000 new young voters. No cable, no TNT. No TNT, hardly any chance to see this. I'm in the rain. Which would be chilling, but no way to know how chilling because no cable, no weather channel, no way to know what to pack for your next vacation. After all, you might need an umbrella. OK Cable, it's everything television can be. You up? You're not plugged in. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to You Are the Expert. Our phone numbers are 1-800-EXT-HELP and our fax number is area code 516-596-0715. It's time for Joe Barcelona. Hello, hey, Joe. Sir. Welcome back to the program. It's great, great to, to see be you. Back here. The egg cream guy. That's me. The egg cream man. Actually, I wonder if Rough Rough can figure out which radio really works. Which radio does really work here? Um, Joe has a collection of, uh, would you call them antique radios? Yeah, a collector's radios, I guess. Collector's radios, and yeah. it looks like you've been collecting for some time. I've been collecting radios, old radios, for about 10 years now. How did you get started? How, how just, does one get started doing that? Just going to garage sales and picking up junk at old, uh, old garage sales. Uh, do they work? Yeah, uh, actually, most of them all do work. I think these little transistor radios are the ones that I got first. These are beauts. And they're like, they were 50 cents each. Remember when we were kids and used to go to the beach and listen to the, the baseball games with these little things? Sure, and they had the little earpiece, like I'm yeah. wearing here. Mm -hmm. It goes right in on the side. Yep. Well, these things I got for like 25 cents with the genuine fake leather cases. Yep. And now they sell for about 5 or $10 each. Yep. You know? But you bought them for 50 cents. For 50 cents. Oh, cool. Again, everything I get is at garage sales. This is a Falcon Crown six transistor radio, a name you can trust, Falcon Crown. Falcon Crown, yes. I yeah. used to drive a Ford Falcon way back when. Did you? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure there's a, a dirty good joke radio. in there about a king and, and what he should do with his hat. That's true. But um, what else do you have here? I got a couple of other old radios here. This is a, actually, all of these are considered portable radios. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, portable. Can you imagine? Now, this is before the days of the boombox. Can you imagine going to the beach with one of these guys here? Oh, that is about the size of a boom box. Yeah, but this is, feel this. It's pretty heavy. Wow! Oh, man. Here, take this. Sure. Oh, oh now, now it's it's heavy. <laughs> uh, now, this, this is a transoceanic radio. Where do the CDs go? Um, in the in bank. bank. <laughs> Joe Barcelona, very funny guy. Oh, God. Here, let me put this up here. Okay, yeah. so this is transoceanic? This is transoceanic, and it has a wave, mani wave magnet. Um, yeah, well, if you're sitting at the beach, I'm yeah. sure it draws waves towards you. Oh! That, oh what is, is this? This is, this, is, this is the antenna. And you're supposed to... There's a suction cup in here somewhere, but I'm not going to go look well, for it Well, there's a suction born every minute. But That's what is right. It? Zenith wave magnet. Now you're Zenith, now you don't. There's the headset here that comes out. Too. Wow, is they're, that, they're, they got is a that little, mildew? Uh, yes, actually it is. Oh, my God. Um, I never opened up what's inside there. That's cool, but you've got, oh, look at this. Look at I've got the instructions and everything in operating here. Operating instructions on here. I think the Lindbergh baby is in here, too. You think so? Yeah. 
Oh, here's a suction cup. Chicago 39, That's Illinois, right. pre-zip code. That was um, not 1939, but the zip code, right? Yep. Wow. So these, these are my old radios. And I have another Zenith over here. With now, when you tune in these radios, do you only get old shows like Jack Benny oh, and Fred Allen mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know George Burns and Gracie and Allen? Gracie Allen, exactly. Yeah, the um, George Burns and Gracie Mansion. And Gracie Mansion. Now, I love I love listening to like old radio stations with these radios. They they do work. They do all work. And actually, this one, the Transoceanic, works fantastic. And I can pick up um, Korea and I picked up Russia. And I picked up a few women, too, with that radio. Did you? I'm sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. to help you carry it. That's probably. absolutely right. Yeah. Not meaning to change the subject, but can you, you know, tell me how I look sitting here? I uh, look, you look so, like, like Forrest Gump, I think. Where's your box of chocolates? My name's Polchansky. Bill, Bill Polchansky. But you can call me Bill Polchansky. Yeah. I think, I think we've got to do something different with these chairs. I don't know. Let me see if I can yeah. lounge here. Yeah. I feel like I should be sitting in my underwear. Uh, <laughs> thank God for small favors. Yes, you said it. Okay, so, no, back to the radios. Back to the radios. Anyway, the plastic ones that you see in the front are early plastic um, radios, and they're actually called Bakelite. Bakelite? And Bakelite. That now, was before now, there was is plastic. Is that a brand name? Oh, that's, a, that's the material. It's the material, made. but actually it is a brand name, too. Bakelite. Oh, Bakelite. Like as Thermos you can see. is Thermos. a brand name. And exactly. Now, I don't know if, Eddie, can you get this here? No, yeah, we've shown. Bakelite. And all the early radios were made in this, this form. It was plastic. And it was, some of the radios are worth a lot more money because they're that, that colored, that bright like red or green yeah. or orange color. And that's called have, Caitlin. Now is that bright red one there, is that well, Caitlin? Well, no, unfortunately that's plastic. Plastic. If, yeah. if that were um, a Caitlin radio, that would be worth about $650. <laughs> and um, see what it is, is that with those colors, they could make the radios only once and then they'd have to break the mold. Mm. So I guess when the radio was born, they broke the mold. Yeah. Hmm. Now, wait well, a minute. Now, not, not this why kind of mold. Why would they break the mold? Yeah, why, why did they have to break the mold? It was just the way the process went. So they could only make one radio. It wasn't, and they were very expensive at the time. Sure. And, well, um, if they're breaking that many molds. Yeah, exactly. That's not nice. It's called Caitlin. Actually, I think I got a picture in here. I don't know if we can get it here. Ooh, well, here, you see that? Ooh, that is sweet. Look at that radio. Yeah. This one over here. And again, you can still find these. You can find them at either garage sales or antique shops. And if you're lucky enough, you know, people think that they're just old radios, so you can get them for a couple of dollars. But the, um, the Museum of Natural History, uh, and I'm sorry, not the Museum of Natural History, the Museum of American History did a, um, did a whole display on modern, modernism. And they had the Caitlin radios. And so they were all there. So, so how, what are some of the ages of some of the radios? This one here is from about 1942. 1942, so this that would be a little over 50 years ago. Yeah. This one is from the 19, late 1940s or early 50s, like about 1949 or 50. Okay, so we're talking about 45, yeah. 40 years or so. Um, these little radios, these little guys down here, are all from the 60s. You know, yeah, I remember 64. the 64. And this guy, you know, is from the 40s, 1948, 49, post-war radios. And this one here, another portable radio, another Zenith. The Zenith was a very popular brand. Yeah. Is, again, Zenith, is Zenith still around? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Actually, they're one of, probably one of the only manufacturers that's still American-made. Really? Uh, electronics manufacturers. You mean uh, sure. other, like RCA? Uh, brands RCA like might that be made? American, too. Well, RCA was recently bought out, weren't they, by uh, General Electric? So. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I think the thing that we uh, should tell our viewers to do mm -hmm. is to uh, go down to the Wiz or some appliance store now, yeah. buy a whole bunch of radios. Absolutely. Keep them in your basement or mm -hmm. your attic or your garage for about 40 or 50 years. Yeah. And then sell them at a yard sale for 50 cents. What they should do maybe is to go call up Sony and find out which ones they break the molds on. Oh. And then buy those radios. Then they become more collectible. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does uh, Rough Rough have to say about that? Rough Rough likes the radio. Likes Rough the radio. Rough, I, uh, I can remember in the 60s going to sleep having my transistor radio with a little earplug in, listening to like Cousin Brucie and mm -hmm. all the uh, jazz Bill Collins. who played. Uh, yep all the uh, rock and roll songs of the late mm -hmm. 50s, early 60s. Uh, and speaking of music of the mm -hmm. late 50s and early 60s, yeah, okay. you're coming back next week. That's right, you know I am. What we're you, gonna know? Do? What? you know what we're going to do? You know what we're going to do? We're going to take phone calls from viewers who are going to try to stump us uh -huh. On songs. Oh, that's right. Yes. From uh, throughout the ages, mm -hmm. and uh, you're you're big on uh, like uh, 1940s music. The 30s, and 40s, 40s, and early 50s. So you, know, you got yes. that covered, and I got and sort got the of the 50s and, and the 70s. 60s. And yeah. uh, so next week, when Joe Barcelona is here, we want people to call up. Oh, please and, call. You know, hit us with your best shot, and we can sing. Fire that away. Too.
Yeah. <laughs> and I'll even bring in my guitar so we can oh, really? we can do it with, with accompaniment. Oh, excellent. We can well, do we that. work for the accompaniment, don't we? Uh, yeah. We'll do it accompaniment way? We'll do it the accompaniment way. Joe Barcelona, thanks so Thank much you, for Bill. bringing your radio. Oh, sure, my pleasure. I want you to stay here because okay. we're going to look at a video of uh, Alyssa Johnson, oh. champion baton twirler. She is great. This video was unbelievable that really? a human being could go through these things and, and make it look so beautiful and graceful and all that stuff. And she's going to be live in here in the studio Excellent. as soon as you clear out with all this stuff. Okay. But uh, watch the video before Excellent. you go, okay? Alyssa Johnson, baton twirler. On You're the Expert. My wingtips. Is that beautiful or what? Unbelievable. Alyssa Johnson just returned from the world. Tell me what they are. National. The world. Na the no, national. The national competition. The national competition, yeah. which was in Daytona, Florida. Yeah. And you won a silver medal. Yes, I did. Welcome to the program. You Thank are you. a very talented lady. Thank you. And you are how old? Um, just turned 17. You just turned 17 after the regional championship, yeah. which was in Pennsylvania. I yeah. read that there was a whole big story on you in Newsday. I mean, you are like a media hound. <laughs> the reporters hang around outside your door and ask yeah. you, you know, where you, you know, where you skateboard and stuff like that. Uh-huh. All the time. All the time? No, but that's okay. This <laughs> is great. And, uh, you just turned 17 and you've been twirling baton since when? Since I was six. Six years old. Yeah. Wow. So 11 years. Been competing years. since I was seven. So. You got right into it. Yeah. Six I'm years old, you started, you said, hey, this is pretty good. I like this. And I was in gymnastics, and then I decided to twirl. Mm hmm And then I started winning when I was like seven. Wow. New was York, being in, oh, I'm sorry. Go it was New York State competitions. Hmm. So, haven't lost that yet. Was being, you've won every year? Mm-hmm. Whoa, you're a hot stuff. <laughs> Ooh, hot one. Um. Has, was being in gymnastics helpful? Don't make me giggle now. Uh, was that uh, helpful to yeah. be in baton twirling? I noticed it was like a free floor exercise that you were yeah, doing with that was, of that um, stuff. Yeah, that's called our freestyle competition. That's, um, you pick your own music, you pick your own tricks. It's whatever, go everything goes. Wow. Have whatever. We have a phone caller already. It's Eric from Hewlett. Hello, Eric. You're on the phone. 
Hello. Hello, Eric. Welcome to the program. How you doing? Okay, how are you? Good, thanks. What do you think of all this stuff? Uh, I think it's neat. Uh, um, I was just wondering, um, you're very attractive. Did we lose Eric? Eric is gone. Uh -huh. uh, he, he got nervous. He wanted to ask you a question, but uh, you know, you're a very striking young woman, and uh, he just got shy, and you now he's going to go home and hit the clearasil. <laughs> uh, so uh, how about, uh, well, the routines. Where do the routines come from? The do you make them up? Um, Are they standard? Or do you no, open up a book and say, let's do this routine today? No, they, um, there's different types of music. There's um, the freestyle competition, the pairs competition, which I do with my friend Lisa. Um, then there's team competition, and then there's also a national besides that, mm -hmm. which I competed in everything. Um, the national competition, there's set music you have to use, and then there's the freestyle, which you use, whatever. And um, I don't know. And you just sort of just have kinda, all these moves, and you put them all together. Yeah, Can you, uh, you use your team and, and you show uh, us some of the basic moves? Basic moves. Yeah. yeah. There you want to hold this? Sure. Oh, you can Gladly. hold that. Okay. A basic move would be a flat wrist twirl. Uh-huh. Or, um... Flat wrist twirl. Flat wrist twirl, because all you use is your wrist. Hmm. Okay, and then there's the figure eights, which go front and back. Oh, that's sneaky. That's yeah, I've seen one. that, and I yeah. thought, how do you keep up? I mean, that looks like it's moving so fast. How do you know when you want front and back? Can you do it slower? Yeah. To show what it looks like in slow motion? It's, just, it's called a figure eight, because what it does is makes an eight. Oh, the ball. Now, now it looks so Remember? simple when you're doing it that way, but when you do it up to speed, do it up to speed again, it looks like you're ready to take off. Yeah, like, like a little helicopter. helicopter. On Leon's show, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, that's the flat wrist, that's the figure eight. Now figure what other uh, some um, cool moves? There's the arm roll. Arm roll. You try that one. You put it under your arm and you roll it over. Ooh, arm roll. I use that on my car. It helps get out the stains. Yeah. Arm you roll. want to try it? You try An it. arm roll? Me? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't want to hurt anybody. Now, the other arm. The other arm. Left arm. Yeah, and you roll it over. Just like this? Hey, come back here, you. There you go. Hey, that was it? Yeah. This is a piece of cake. There now, am go. I supposed to let it go all the way? Yeah. No, you don't throw it. Yeah, it. it has to roll. See, what they do is there's different types when you twirl. When you twirl, there's... Well, oh, cut that off. There's arm roll, there's um, rolls, contact sections. When you do contact, it's fast flipping. Yay, yay, yay. Catching in different places. Yeah. Um, rolls, you're not allowed to use your hands. It must roll within your body. Okay. It's not allowed to touch your hands. <laughs> do that again. These are called Fujimis. Fujimis? Fujimis. And where did that name come from? Um, a girl who made it up. Her name is Fujimi? That was her last name. Oh. Um, there's also back neck rolls. Let's see some of them. Yeah, back neck rolls. Whoa! Roll them on your back of your neck. Front neck rolls. Which... Can you do that again? Whoa! Front neck rolls, back neck rolls. And then um, there's another thing from a girl that was made was called Lucero's. Lucero's. Her name was Annetta Lucero. And she made those. Which is, again, you're not allowed to touch it, the rolls. That's, that's great. And and is there like a book or do, who hands these my coach exercises around? How do you how do you learn about them? Or um, do you write them down? Do you take pictures of them? No, it's basic. Videos? It's like brought down from generations, I guess. Mm. It's been since early long time. We've been having USTA, which every year someone else thinks of something and someone takes it and they change it a little bit and then it's their root trick and like there were so many tricks that I used to have that people all of a sudden you see people doing. You know, no, that's mine. Don't do hey, that. You know, stealing my tricks. Yeah. It, and then you stealing can bop them with these things because this is yeah. this is pretty hard. I mean, yeah. if I was to practice with this for a while, I would come in here looking yeah, like a Yeah, you get the bruises the all up your arms. Hey. Trying to catch them. They're huh? doing the elbow pops. Elbow pops. Oh, I like those. Those I saw that on the tape. They're called elbow pops. Yeah, these are elbow pops. I used to have those when I was a kid when the good humor truck would come around. Or arm <laughs> arm pops. Arm pops. Which most people would do. That's Elbow great. pops left handed. They're not ready right handed. That's great. We have another phone caller. We have Melissa. Marissa from Gibson. Hello, Marissa. Welcome to the program. Hello? Hello, Marissa. She's gone. <laughs> We're having trouble with the today. phone lines tonight. I don't know what's happening. But um, can I uh, try something very basic? Can you show me how to do something very yeah. basic? Okay. You're going to remember, this is the ball, the this big part. Is, this is called the ball. And this is called the tip. The tip. Right. Mm. Okay. And you're going to hold the baton straight out. Okay. And the ball, 
The bull is this part I can do. I can. No, do see, that's you can't joke though. No, I can't. You gotta learn. Mm. Th then we Sorry. can play around later. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're gonna hold it out there. Yep. And the ball's gonna circle over your arm. Like. Just little circles. Oops. Well, the ball is gonna circle. The ball over. is okay. gonna circle over your arm. Like that. There you go. And now you're doing hey. the flat wrist twirls. Flat wrist twirls. See. Oh. This is what I teach my students. What happens when it gets wobbly? It just bumped into my arm there. How do well, I prevent you that? You gotta hold it more with your hand. You use your wrist. You keep your. You have to have very loose wrists as well. Okay. Loose wrist, straight arm, relaxed straight arm, arm. Relaxed, straight. Relaxed. Na, 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 now you're na, trying na, something na, na, funky. Na, na. I am. No, that's funky. Hey, 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 cut that out. Ooh, ah. But most twirls, you have to learn how to do things both hands. Oh no. Ambidextrous. Oh, ambidextrous. Huh? Yeah. I want to try this uh, ball over the top. <laughs> yeah, my left hand. I don't know it's what. It's a little it is. weaker, huh? Yeah, very weak. I have to practice this. Where can I get a baton? Uh, you can. You have to order them. Yeah. You can get one through me. I can get you one. You can. Oh, I you're can. my conduit to the baton twirling world? Yeah, I now sell batons to my students since I um, teach out of the PIL. You teach? Yeah. You're, you're, you're so young and you have students? How oh, old this are your my, students? This is my third year teaching. Third year? Um, wow. My students range from, let's say, 3 to 11. There's around 35 of them. Three years old? Three year olds? This is taller than a three year old. They, they come in different sizes. Oh, they use the little, smallest, little teensy I think, ones? is a 14. Oh, that's so cute. This is 29 inches. Uh huh. So, this is too small inches. for you. Yeah. Well, it might be safer for me, though. I'm afraid yeah. that, you know, I'm going to black it. It's easier eyelids. to throw with a bigger baton. The bigger yeah. it is. Wow. Especially when you're doing those elbow pops. So how would you start if you were teaching a three-year-old? What were some of the moves teach, I would that teach you would her teach? The, the flat wrist twirl, um, something called a neck wrap. Neck wrap? Yeah, you hold it in your hand, in your right hand, and you wrap it the front, and then you grab it on the other side. <laughs> and then you let go before you choke yourself. Most of kids choke themselves. Oh, they do? Yeah. Most oh, of them so do. I'm, I'm following right along yeah, with the three-year-old. Yeah, you're following right along with the three. That's great. Now, let me do this again seriously. Up around here and like that? Yeah. Ooh. Or they do, um, what else they do? They do the finger twirls. They're s just starting to learn. This is usually something you teach after a few years. But I have, there you go. Yeah, and then over the top. Over the top. Uh, and wrap around. Why do I want to wrap it around? Oh, I there see. There you go. I see. Oh, or okay. um, I, have one, I have one student who did a New York State competition. This is her second year. She did her no drop performance. She did the best performance. And, um, she did you say she no drop or nose no drops? Drop. Oh, no I drop. thought she was using nose drops, and no. that's illegal in competition. <laughs> and she has basic rolls. These are called rolls when they're just rolling on your arm. Mm -hmm. These are arm rolls. That's um, great. A lot of the, lots of different levels. Well, Alyssa, thanks so much for being on the program, You're and welcome. thanks for teaching this. And uh, I can order one of these. Yeah, I'll order you one. Okay, and I'll uh, I'll work on this. Hey. All right. Oh, look at this. Is this cool or what? That's very. Will very I make good. it in competition in yeah, 11 years? Maybe. 11 years? No, there's men twirling, I think, your age. Men twirling? Yeah, there's too? men twirlers. Whoa. World champion. His this name is, is the 1990s. Don't you forget it. Well, <laughs> I want you to stay right here because it's time to take it to the nines. Have a seat. Okay. And, uh, or do you want to twirl while I'm taking it to the nines? You know what taking it to the nines is? No, I don't. Ah, well, it's a very highly uh, sophisticated uh, thing we do around here. Okay. And, uh, what we do every week, we come up with a theme, and um, it has to be nine letters. It could be one word, two words, three words, and all the letters get words added to them. It's, it's, it, like I said, it's highly technical and very sophisticated. But tonight's taking it to the nines is, oh yeah, let's twirl. I'll stand up, and you can twirl. And there's our, in take, take, it's into the nines. It's supposed to be taking it to the nines, but <laughs> anyway. Uh, Taking it to the nines. Tonight, our uh, taking it to the nines phrase is food feast, because all around Long Island, they're having uh, carnivals, festivals, feasts, a uh, parish feast, stuff like that, and there's lots of good food around. And are you ready? Our F in food feast stands for footlong franks. Mmm, oh, footlong hot dogs. Well, see the F with the food and the foot and the... Anyway, uh, O in food feast is old world delights. Lots of fun. Zapolis, and they were one of my favorite groups from the late 60s, early 70s. Led Zapoli, you might remember them. Uh, the second O is onions, oregano, and olive oil. Lots of oil. Can we get a shot of Alyssa doing her thing here? Because this is something that she's doing. 
Whoa, look at it. Okay. <laughs> All right. D in food feast. Deep fried bread dough. Yes. Okay. F, falafel. Falafel. Do you feel awful? Well, take a bromo. Then you'll feel better. Falafel. Get it? Fill up. I fill up. I uh, forget it. E is eat, eat, eat. And that's what we like to do at these food feasts. A, assorted sticky treats like cotton candy and uh, caramel apples and candied apples and caramel corn. Mmm, lots of fun stuff. Is that what you have in your daily diet to help you be a better? Of course. Caller? Of course. Lots no, of we have stuff. strict diets. Strict? Strict diet. Well, that would come under S, which is the next letter. But you, you ever notice how cotton candy looks like insulation? Don't mix them up. It's, it would be terrible. Anyway, S in Food Feast is sausage and mm, peppers. And T stands for tasty. Do we, have a, do we have a phone call on the phone? Oh, we lost the phone call. Well, again, Alyssa, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you very much. Thanks for being part of our Taking It to the Nines. And we're going to take it to a break right now and be back with Sarah Lieberman, champion cheerleader. She's going to cheer us on. Three cheers for us. Yahoo! because you can do things that usual museums wouldn't let you do. You get to watch yourself on the news pretending that you're like a news person. I played on the computers. I like the part where we play with the bubbles because that was really fun. I like the wheelchair where you sit down. Everyone was having fun. That was great. Take cable away, and what have we got? Well, no cable, no HBO. No HBO, no comic relief. No comic relief, no $28 million for the homeless. No cable, no TNT. No TNT, virtually no place to see this. I got blue I got But you wouldn't got it because you wouldn't get cable. And no cable, no Nick at Night. No Nick at Night, no Get Smart. And that's not the only way you wouldn't get smart, because no cable, no CNN. No way to get some of the best news in the world. OK Cable, it's everything television can be. Welcome back to You're the Expert. I'm Bill Polchinski. Hello. And our phone number is 1-800-EXT-HELP if uh, you can stay on the line. And our fax number, if you can stay on the fax line, is 516-596-0715. And I'm sitting here in the studio with Sarah Lieberman. Hello, Sarah. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And you're from Oceanside High School. Right. I could see O-H-S. I thought that was for the O's, you know, that you probably get when you do all these cheerleading routines. <laughs> That's yeah. marvelous. Uh, would you like to start us out with yes. a cheer? Yes, I'll show you a cheer then. Okay. This is great. Okay. Ready. Sailor team, let's hear it. Stand up and cheer it. Go, go. Team, go. Come on, go. Team, go. Stand up and scream. Go, sailor team. Go, sailor team. All right. Oh, and great. you do that to the fans, try to get them involved. Do the fans usually, you know, no, get involved? No, not at it? our high school, really. No, Uh-oh. <laughs> no, we that's, try to, but... That's not a good showing promotion outside. <laughs> Come on, what is the school spirit? What's going on out there? We try to make it better, but hopefully this year it'll get better. Well, that's great. Yeah. And uh, you make up these routines yourself? Uh, you have a coach? Right, we have a coach, and we have captains. Usually there are four captains. Are you a captain? No, not because I'm going to be a senior. So, Ooh. maybe this year. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Um, they have two captains a season mm -hmm. for fall and then spring and winter. Okay. And um, there's like we sometimes we make up routines. Sometimes we get like from other squads. Like we'll ask from other schools and they'll teach us routines. And that's what we learn from. Is there a lot of that mixing with other schools? Or yeah. uh, I would think it would sometimes be a catty kind of thing yeah, where no, you wouldn't want to help anybody no, out. No, sometimes say, there's a lot of. Let's show them something that will really make them fall on their yeah. knees. <laughs> sometimes there's a lot of competition. And like, because other there are a lot of schools that like there's different ways of cheering. There's like diff different styles. You know, a lot of a lot of schools are differently. Some schools have like stunts and dances and don't have. You know, everyone does it differently. But sometimes you find like a school that a team that'll really help you and you know help you out. So how, how many on the team you said? This year we have 16. 16, and you're cheering varsity. Right. And junior varsity. You you cheered junior I varsity previously. I cheered junior varsity when I was a sophomore. 
And then this past year, I was a junior, I was on varsity, and when I'm going to be senior, I'm going to be on varsity. Hmm. What do we look for if uh, you're the cheerleading coach and uh, someone's coming to you to, uh, do you call it auditioning? Do you call well, it the we call trying tryout? Out, trying yeah. out. You're trying out for the team. What does the coach look for? Um, well, there's like so much, definitely voice, like a lot, like cheerleading itself has changed a lot. You know, it's not the cute little cheerleaders anymore. You know, I mean, I definitely think it's become more of a sport. And I mean, it requires so much like coordination and balance, being able to like do things like no fear, you know, everyone has to, everything has to be precise, you know, together. Yeah, no, the, there are a lot of pyramids and things going on. Yeah, we on. do a lot Standing of stunts. Standing on shoulders and... Uh, right. There's a lot of stunts that's more, you use more these days. Uh, how about gymnastics? Is yeah, gymnastics. I mean, it's not required. For the tryouts, gymnastics is not really required. But if you have that, it's yeah, really a definitely, plus. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because a cheerleader could do solo routines as well. Mm -hmm. that, right. You know, so if someone is mm -hmm. really good doing mid-air flips and you know, yeah. triple Yeah, it always it adds something to routine. It's always oh, good. That, that's great. Yeah. So your coach comes up with the routines or? No. Well, sometimes we get help from the NCAA cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. Like there's a camp at Hofstra this coming weekend, which um, some of the girls from our team is going to go to. And we're gonna, they're going to teach us some different um, routines and some different new cheers if you want to learn them and teach them to the rest of the team. So, you know, we can learn that kind of stuff. That's great. Yeah. We have a phone call. We have Mark from Albertson on the line. Hello, Mark. Yeah, how you doing? Welcome to the program. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, what's, your, what's your name again? I have forget. It's Sarah Lieberman. Sarah, right? how you doing? All right, thanks. Um, I have two questions. What do you think are your chances of um, cheerleading for, like, a Big Ten school? What, you, what, you want to do? what are your chances of cheerleading for a Big Ten school? Oh, college? I don't know. I haven't decided if I really want to do it not, or not. But um, I know in some of the camps, in some of the camps that we um, go to, they have tryouts for all American cheerleaders, really? which definitely gets you into like higher ranks. And I don't think you can get into a school on cheerleading. I'm not really sure actually, but you know, I, it, it's pretty hard because you're required to do a lot more than you have in high school. And um, one more question: You go to Oceanside, right? Yeah. Do you know a girl named? <laughs> no, wait a minute. No, we, 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 we. Oh no. Do you know? Uh, have you ever been to California? No. Oh, well, I was going to ask you if you knew somebody out there. <laughs> uh, are there any male, cheerle male cheerleaders on Not your squad? Not this year, but we did have two male cheerleaders um, two years ago, I think it was. And they didn't cheer with us, but they helped us with the stunts. They um, spotted in the back, so you always have to have a spotter to make sure someone doesn't fall. Oh, yeah. So we had, we had two male cheerleaders, and that was well, funny. Well, yeah, yeah. that's uh, handy to have, you know, at least males on the bottom, a little stronger shoulders. I'm not being sexist. <laughs> this is, has nothing I to do with I think they actually either. went into cheerleading at, in college, too. Really? I, I think they did. Someone told me they did. Are there scholarships for cheerleading? Um, I think when you go into the All-American and you're trying out in camp, there are scholarships for that. But I'm not sure if they give them away at high schools or not. Hmm. I, recently, there hasn't been any. Oh. So. Oh, the scholarships. I'm just thinking, did I miss out in my life? Because I asked about cheer male cheerleaders before. Let me just, uh, this is rough, rough, by right, the way. I... <laughs> you met Dante before. Did he make you an animal? Yes, he did. I am not an animal. I'm a human being. Here, stay here. here. Some water? Good. Stay there. Looks like the one from Garfield, doesn't it? What's his name? Odie. Odie. Named after the cologne. Okay. The reason I uh, brought this up was, where am I? Okay. Can I get a, a close-up <laughs> down here? This is the 1968 Earl L. Vandermeulen <laughs> um, yearbook. And here I am, down in the corner. I, I don't know if we can get in any closer than that. It's hard to see. I'm over here. Well, we had male cheerleaders, as you can see, a whole bunch of us, along with the female cheerleaders. Wow. And, uh, I'm just wondering if I could have gotten a scholarship, you know. Uh, where am I? I'm right over here. There are a lot more male cheerleaders in the, in the NCA. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all male cheerleaders in the NCA. In high schools, you don't see it as much. Yeah. But in the National Cheerleaders Association, there are a lot of male cheerleaders. Well, it's been a long time for me. Uh, 1968, uh, 1995. You know, it's been about 12 years that I'm out of high school now, so I'm a little rusty. But uh, could you get up and sure. uh, we can get up together and you Definitely. can show me some basic moves? Okay. Are there basic moves? Or well, there... there's basic things that you have to know, like um, for your voice, nowadays it has to be very deep and clear. Deep and clear. Right. And like you don't James really... Earl Jones would be a good <laughs> cheerleader. Yeah, actually. Uh, let me ask you about that. I, I noticed cheerleaders really yell and scream at the mm -hmm. top of their lungs. 
on the day after a game, do you walk around going, hey, how you doing? Not that really. That was a great game last night. <laughs> how do you prevent that from happening? Well, because it's not, you're not really screaming. You're like, you're trying to, you're, it's more like shouting. You just, you're not really going to scream as hot, because it's not, you want to have a deep voice. Mm -hmm. So when you go deeper, you don't really lose it as, as much as if you're squeaking or if you're really high. So you want to go deep and loud and clear, you know? So that's, it's better that way, and you won't really lose your voice. I mean, on big games, if you have homecoming and pep rally and all that kind of stuff, then, you know, you have a chance of it. Hmm. But doing it all the time, you don't really do to lose your voice that much. Wow, we have a phone call. We have Brooke from Oceanside. Do we know Brooke? Yes, we do. We do? <laughs> Hello, Brooke. Hi. Welcome to the program. Hi, Sarah. How are you doing? Okay. Brooke I was wondering. Yeah. I'm glad this I could see you. <laughs> um, I wanted you to show me your favorite cheer. My favorite chair. I just did my favorite chair before. We used that for triads. All right, then, um, what do you think made you stand out? What, what did you think made the judges notice you out of um, all the girls that tied up for cheerleading? Yeah. Well, actually, I'm the shortest one on the team. No. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I am pretty short. I'm always standing in the front. That's a plus. I must say oh, that about right. cheerleading. Get front, always get in the front because I'm short. But um, a plus. I don't know. I get the most spirited on my team this year. Go, Sarah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm really into it, and I like, I'm very into cheerleading. That's very great. into it. All right, well, we have about a minute to go here okay. on the show, so how about a quick cheer so uh, you can show me, and we can do it together as we go into the uh, sunset here. Okay, I'm going to show you a chant. This is something we want to do on the sideline just a to chant. get the crowd going, okay? Uh, so you're going to clap like this, put your hands together. Good. We want to go, go, G-O, go, sailors, go. Those are the words, okay? okay? Sailors is the name of the team. That's, yeah, okay. that's my team, okay? Oceanside. Okay. So go, go, G O, go, sailors, go. Okay, now we put the movement in. Ready? The movement. Yeah. I thought this go. was the movement. Okay. No, you go. Go, G O, go, go. Sailors, sailors, go. Go. Now what? What does that move? You hit. Okay, you're going. Go, go G O, out. This is a T motion. Go. Sailors, go. Go. Okay? Oh, oh and hand I on your hip. Hand on and make sure your arm, you want to be able to point. That's how straight. And then put it in your fist. Put your hand in a fist like that. Yeah. Okay. I feel like John Travolta. <laughs> Sarah Lieberman, thanks so much for Thank being on the show. Next me. week on You're the Expert, we're having reflexology. <laughs>